right, guys, what's going on? Ronnie Tejeda here. Very excited to introduce my mentor, my team leader, the guy I look up to for the past couple of years during my real estate adventure. I ran into Brian Casella when I first was studying my real estate exam almost four years ago now. And it's so crazy because I feel like now I, well, we've grown into a relationship where it's more of a brother, brotherly bond and, uh, and always someone I look up to. Brian Casella is a real estate agent out of California, Southern, Southern California. And right now he is um, a, a person who a lot of people respect. He uh, runs multiple businesses right now. And at the moment, and uh, he's actually going to finally be coming down here to the East Coast. We're going to be tanning all day, Jim, and uh, getting some brawls out here, letting them know what's up. So he's coming down here in about a week and a half. So just in case anybody didn't know him in my platform, I wanted to properly introduce him. So uh, welcome, brother. Happy to have you here. Ronnie, what's going on, man? You know, I'm excited to get out there again to the East Coast, bro. It's been a minute. Um, you know, we've been touring a lot and growing the team really quickly. And, you know, we get a lot of love out on the East Coast. So I'm excited, man. It's going to be fun. We're going to get some uh, some uh, Superman pull-ups in and some calisthenics. It's going to be fun, bro. So I'm excited. What's up with you, bro? Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm just excited because uh, I'm going to have the pleasure to, uh, you know, showing you around Jer Jersey, South Jersey. We're going to be fist pumping. And uh, we're just going to be getting balls all day. That's really our main focus. Now, we're going to um, actually going to do a quick tour here in the East Coast. We're going to start the Lunch and Learn out in Delaware. Shout out to Carol over there. We're going to start Monday, February 22nd. And then we're going to come out here in Jersey in uh, Clifton, Noches de Colombia, uh, the 23rd. And then we're going to be heading to Philly um, the following Wednesday. So we're going to hit... Uh, the tri-state area, and next time when he comes back, we're going to definitely hit New York. But let's get right into it, man. Uh, just a quick, brief introduction about yourself. If anyone doesn't know you, just introduce yourself real quick, and we'll get started. For sure, man. Uh, BC, Brian Casella. I am 34, uh, about to be 35 here in a couple months. I've been in the real estate business for uh, seven and a half. Uh, end of this year will be eight years that I've been in the business. I previously was a basketball player who played overseas. Got into real estate, started doing social media. And here we are today. I've created an empire. I've been able to align myself and attract people like Ronnie and have a really good time in the process. I've built a coaching program and really just carved a niche out for myself and really started a movement. Um, Ronnie's part of Team BC here on the East Coast. Uh, we're in 12 states now. It's also part of Modern Success, which is a coaching program that I started a long time ago, about two and a half years ago, I think now. And we have about 300 members. We do live events. It's really fun. So I've really been able to... Uh, have fun and uh, I think document the process of growth that somebody can go through if they dedicate themselves. And I just happened to put it out on video over the last couple of years. So it's really gotten a lot of traction and here we are today. Yeah, brother. And I'm happy to be a part of it from, I would say, <laughs> freaking Jose with the mangos, <laughs> mangosito. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I was happy to be a part of it during the beginning stages. Um, I can say I'm definitely one of the, the veterans in the modern success movement for sure. Uh, joined the program years ago. Uh, it was in the summer of 2018. And I can personally say that my life changed dramatically as soon as I joined. So if um, let's get no, let's talk about MS at the end. Let's get started with um, how important it is to to be a professional and to implement who you are as a being in this type of business, in this real estate industry. Great question, man. You know, uh, the word professionalism, I think uh, today in 2021, and even before that, right? People have misconstrued this, this word and, and they, they pay attention or think it's things that it's not, right? You know, when you look at our business, um, or any business, right? But if we're going to focus on real estate, we're delivering a service to somebody, right? We're not selling a tangible product. I'm helping client A or client B either purchase a home or sell a home. So professionalism is around that. Do you know your process? Uh, one thing that we focus on a lot that is missing in our community of real estate is communication skills. Can you effectively communicate with your client? Can you deliver the result? Can you 
take them through the whole process with a minimum amount of stress and hassle because for the average person going through this real estate transaction, it's crazy. They've heard horror stories in the past and they have certain perceptions of what it's going to be like, right? So navigating all of that, delivering, you know, the keys, helping them sell for the most money. Those are the things that I'm talking about when we talk about professionalism. Where does everybody else focus? Oh, I don't like your hat. I don't like your scarf. BC, I don't like your tattoos. Oh, you can't cuss. It has nothing to fucking do with that, right? Because if you want to judge it by those rules, then I should not even exist in this fucking thing. Unless I just happen to be Neo from the Matrix and I'm a fucking mathematical anomaly or some shit like that, right? So focus on building your skills. Focus on doing what you need to do. Now, it's not the prettiest. It's not the most popular. However, it's the most effective for you to grow a business and do what you have to do, right? And I noticed the more I evolve in different areas of life, the standard advice I get from most people is almost always wrong. And I have to end up doing something else to get to where it is that I want to go. Yeah, 100%, man. I mean, there's a lot of points there. There was um, even even nowadays, I still get questions like, Ronnie, um, you you expose yourself a lot on your social media. Do you have a business account? And I laugh at it because I remember from the very beginning when I first got my license, I was drinking a protein shake while listening to some, like to some song while dancing and just like being goofy while having a whole suit on. I'm about to go to an appointment, and someone had hit me up and and said, "Oh, I don't think you should you should share. You know, you, I don't think you should be goofy because now you're a professional real estate agent." And, you know, you're young, so you should make sure you carry yourself differently. And it's so crazy because, for example, look look at the way you dress. Like, you have a short sleeve. You have full sleeves in regards to tats. It's like, um, it, it looks like you're going to the beach. But I'm sure that if you go on stage to speak with other realtors or go on a listening appointment with other realtors, you would knock them out the water. So, I mean, let's talk about a little bit the mindset part as well. because. It's so damn missed. Everybody wants to overanalyze the structure of the business, which is very important and simple, by the way. But mindset is, is that that kills the competition. Absolutely, bro. And if I can touch on that, right? To summarize it so people get it, you have to understand the rules of the game and then play the game in a way that's going to allow you to win. So I love what Ronnie just said. At the same time, when I go meet with a client, I look fucking good. I wear a suit when I'm going to meet with a client, right? So I know how to play the game, when to do certain things, and I'm not caught up in opinions and criticisms and judgment. I'm going to play that game the way I need to play it to win, period. Because with that comes a high level of ethics and everything else that we have, right? So we're not, I'm not saying here that you break the law and do crazy shit. No, 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 right? Because we have to have that level of ethics. So, you know, when it comes to the mindset portion, that portion has been so misunderstood, bro. Because when you say that now, people associate that with motivation or some bullshit like that, which has nothing to fucking do with it. And so many people will use that as a trigger word nowadays to market and say, oh, learn the mindset, learn the mindset. But then when you get into it, all it is is motivation and fluff and there's no tangible material. Let me make this point clear to people. Agent A, agent B get into the business. They both start, right? Let's say just for the sake of the argument, agent A has a pretty good mindset, right? But agent B doesn't have a good mindset, meaning all the stuff that people go through in the real estate process and journey on agent B, it weighs on him more mentally, right? And it starts breaking him down. Okay. They both set out and they start day one. Let's fast forward to day 30. Okay. They're all using the same scripts and doing the same things. As time goes on, right? Agent A is going to keep pulling away more and more from agent B. Why? Because agent B doesn't have the mindset. He's going to start missing days at work. He's going to start questioning what he's doing, right? He's going to stop working as hard. He's not going to be as motivated. And all the shit that people give us questions about, agent B deals with, and it starts fucking with him. Versus A, whether he's getting the results that he wants or not, whether he's you know perfectly on track with his goals or a little bit ahead or a little bit behind, because his mind is right, right? he's going to keep doing what he's supposed to do and what he set out to do. So again, follow those two on their journey, six months, one year, two years, three years, agent A, I will bet my life on, I will bet my license on, I'll bet all my money and material things and everything else. I'll bet my soul on the fact that he's going to win. Why? Because the X factor is the mindset. Now, all the layers of the mindset are a million things we could probably talk 10 weeks about, right? But that's the key. That's the glue that holds everything together. And it is by far the most important thing. Right. And I'll wrap it up like this. If it was just about the outside and the know-how, 
in the age of YouTube and social media and information on Google and the internet, why has the failure rate in this industry gone up over the last seven years since I've been in the business? And why hasn't it gone down if it's all about just the basics and the one, two, three, how to and all that bullshit? Yeah. Uh, great points, man. Uh, <laughs> great points for sure. And it's so crazy because I still feel like nowadays we still stand out like crazy. And I go out, for example, to showings or whatever the case is. Like, for example, the other day, it was probably like 20, 25 degrees out. And like you said, I play the part as well. I like looking sharp. I like wearing suits. I like looking good and definitely looking better than most just because I know what that does, not only as a image standpoint, but as a mindset for myself personally. So it was like 25 degrees outside. I was showing homes and I was in a suit with no jacket and a realtor. I didn't even notice her because one, she had a mask, of course. And two, she had like a scarf and a hat. She was like, Ronnie. I'm like, oh, what's up? And she was like, why are you out here trying to look cute? It's cold as hell. I'm like, she was like, oh, today wasn't the day to look cute for me. I'm, I'm wrapped up in all this stuff. And I thought about it. I'm like, wow, well, I'm, I'm, I'm inside the house. And the only reason why I was able to dress nice while it's still cold outside is because one, I definitely take cold showers every day. That's number one. <laughs> but two, simply that I know that my mindset is 20 times stronger than that person. And she can have all the clients that she wants. But I know when it comes to challenges and difficult situations in any real estate endeavors in my journey, I would be her bare none. Like it'll be game right there. So just with those little experiences in, in my journey, and I'm sure you had plenty of those as well, you can you can keep going and know that even if she's selling like let's say 10 million in one year and I'm only selling, for example, like only three, four or five, I know that eventually I'm a out I'm gonna out win her in the long run because I know how to last longer than her. So Maybe if you could share a few of your stories where you've seen that um, maybe some of these top dogs, you soon, you realize that when you met them, they were nowhere near the level of mindset that you had, or you realize that you can easily weigh out the competition. If you could share maybe one or two stories. Yeah, absolutely, bro. And even what you just described in that situation, look at the implications behind that. I, it's not a day to dress cute. It's cold outside. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? You know what I mean? So even her saying you're trying to look cute, right? So there's already an implication there, meaning the thought process behind her statement is there must be some sort of special occasion. And that's why you're dressed like you're dressed. It's not because you care about your image. It's not because it's, that's how you want to dress all that shit to her or anyone else doesn't matter. It's all about, oh, it must be a special occasion, which is the general consensus on planet earth, right? That's how they think nine out of 10 people, eight, nine out of 10, right? So even just in those two little sentences that you said, like so many fucking, you know, uh, alerts went off in my head, right? So I know, for example, when I'm dealing with people like that, right away, I have to say, okay, I'm dealing with a person who thinks at this level, therefore my communication has to be at this level, because yeah. if I speak at a different level, they're not going to vibe with it. They're not going to like it. And in any moment I get into a communication with somebody, the whole goal of that communication is to win, meaning they get what they want to get out of it. And so do you, therefore I have to play the game by the rules. So I have to alter my communication in order to win, right? Conventional wisdom will tell you, you can't do that, Ronnie. You're being fake. Be yourself. What the fuck does be yourself mean? <laughs> really? What the fuck does that mean? Like people are so watered down and literally programmed to all be the same that we're literally just the same version of a program. And we all just look different. Right. Some are taller, some are shorter, some are darker, some are lighter, some are men, some are women. Right. So when you say be yourself, what does that even mean? Right. That was lost in translation somewhere in your childhood when you started getting hit with you're an adult now, except the real world. You can't talk like that. You can't walk like that. You can't dress like that. You have to do this and do that. Right. Which is just I know I kind of went off on a tangent, bro, but that's what people have to fucking start getting here. And, and what am I when I say mindset, I'm talking about working on that right? How do you do that? Right? That's that process, not fucking motivate yourself to get out of bed at eight in the morning, right? Which is stupid. I have people hitting me up, bro. Believe it or not. Hey, bro, how do you motivate yourself to take a cold shower? I'm like, what the fuck does that have to do with motivation, bro? Like you either fucking do it or you don't. Right? Yeah. Anyways, right? I'm going off a tangent. So um, 
very quickly early on in my career, right? Here's one scenario I can remember. I don't even know if I've ever told the story aside maybe from you guys and some of the older lectures. When I was brand new in my area, um, I remember because of my work ethic, it wasn't really my results yet, but because of my work ethic, a lot of people started taking notice of my effort levels, right? Like a lot of brokers had received my uh, business card on their door because I was door knocking a lot. Rumors started circulating about just my work ethic as an agent, even though I was new. Um, I'm, I'm a couple months in every once in a while, a local board or company that's having like a, a lunch and learn or a meeting invites me to speak about, you know, being a new agent and being as disciplined as I'm being disciplined. Because very quickly when I started sharing stuff on social media at a local level here in LA, it started spreading, right? And so I'm getting invited to places. Um, one, I remember there was a big team in my area, right? Uh, I won't name names, but I met the team leader's daughter at the gym one time, right? Just in passing, right? We just had a conversation, whatever. Later on, I see her again and she's like, oh, I didn't know that you're so-and-so, right? You're Brian and blah, blah, blah. At that moment, she attempts to recruit me based on what her father had told her. And, you know, I'm new, but I'm like, you know what? I already made a decision when I started. You know, I really don't want to join a team. I'm just about, you know, growing my own empire. I eventually want to do kind of what your dad is doing and other team leaders are doing, right? And immediately I see a shift in her, right? And I later talked to her dad, but let's talk about that one situation. Now, suddenly she gets angry and upset. And this conversation turns from a recruitment conversation to this is why you're going to fail in the business now because you don't want to join our team, right? And I proceed to get lectured for 30 seconds or a minute about how I'm not going to make it. And that's when I change. And I literally tell her to shut the fuck up and get out of my face. I said, so I said, hold on a second here. So basically what you told me earlier wasn't sincere. You wanted to get me. And now that I said, no, all that sincerity went out the window and your true colors are coming out. So just so you know, you and your dad, remember my fucking name in my face, because you're going to see me and I'm not going to go away. And that's how I left that interaction. Right. But I look at the average person. How would they have handled that situation? Number one, where they have said no, even if they themselves decided, I'm going to go my own way. Or suddenly when there's a temptation to join a team, they get off their purpose. That could have been mistake number one for somebody. Number two, how many people would actually draw the line in that situation, regardless of who's talking to you? It doesn't matter if it's a big team leader or the average Joe. Do you have enough self-respect to draw that line? Or are you going to be like everybody else and just tuck your tail between your fucking legs and run away like a pussy, basically, right? But I told her something and I said, please tell your dad that I said that, right? And he's going to know that I'm somebody serious because you guys are trying to fucking recruit me. So obviously there's some sort of threat there if you're getting this emotional, right? But right there, I had already made the decision, bro, that, you know, I cannot be move, talk, walk and do everything like everybody else. I have to now carve out my own niche. Even if I never had the example before, I can find these examples or small inspirations in these books that I'm reading and people that I'm meeting and events that I'm attending that will help me build that character of what it is to be myself. I was getting back in tune with being a real man and being the real me. And that's when it started coming out, right? Way back then, right? That, that was probably no more than six months into my career in the beginning of the era of me studying and doing personal development and all that stuff, right? So that's what I would say, bro, is a good example of that because that gets to the core, right? That's not real estate knowledge or anything else. That's you handling yourself as an individual and doing what the fuck you need to do to take it to the next level and start to walk a different path and get results that are different from everybody else. Absolutely. Yeah, man, <laughs> cat's going crazy back there. <laughs> um no yeah man uh <laughs> makes sense um no nah, man that's why i love you know speaking and and just and just asking these type of questions because yes you're a real estate agent but there's much more to it i didn't want to ask these same boring ass questions that most people are probably expecting from you or whatnot and and this is what i also wanted to show because anybody who's interested in uh and meeting him or at least coming to the event or being a part of the team or asking him more in-depth questions, start thinking outside of the box, box with anybody. Not even, it doesn't even have to be us. Just start thinking outside the box, period. Because if you ask all these neutral questions, all of this shit is on Google anyways. All these objection handlers and how do you become a real estate agent and all this other stuff. I'm sure you're just doing that because, hey, you're, you're producing content for for your people, you're, pro you know, you're providing value. That's what you're supposed to do. At the end of the day, it's so much more than that. And there's such a huge difference. And once I realized that, 
once I realize that I, for example, you know, anybody that's following me right now and, and you know, Brian, that I love dancing. I was holding myself back from going all out in dancing because I thought it was going to affect my business. The time that I put the dedication, et cetera. The moment, the fucking moment I started diving deep into dancing, my business just kept expanding. Why? Because I don't, I don't want to sound corny, but I was just feeling happier with myself because I was actually doing something that I love. Not saying that I don't love real estate, but it's not my passion. I do love truly helping people and, and getting results and help, you know, putting on my houses and stuff like that. But my true passion is dancing. And I'm sure you can share that with you as well, because you, I, I'm sure your true passion is, well, you say, I don't even want to say, you say what's your true passion and, and how that helped you grow as an individual and how that helped you grow your business uh, in, in, you know, involved with that too. Yeah, man. You know, I, I think until the day that uh, my time in this vessel and this body uh, is done, I don't think anything will ever inspire me at that level like basketball did all the way throughout my career. You know, even now, um, I can kind of draw a parallel with helping people and studying communication and all that, which is a different, we can say, chapter or era of my life. But when I think about the times of being in basketball and spending all those countless hours in the gym and doing all that stuff, like nothing really inspired me and moved me like basketball. However, in that, is where I found all that raw material and tools that then I could translate into what I'm doing now to build a life that I want and tap into that, that, that special sauce that everybody needs to tap into to have success in any arena. Because whether it's basketball or dancing or this or that, if you are not able to tap into that, then your, your effort levels will be the same as everybody else, right? I remember an entrepreneur, it might've been in a book that I read a long time ago. He said, for you to like do things in any area of life and achieve a high level, like you literally have to be crazy by other people's measurements. Like you literally do. And he's right. Why else would someone like me throughout my whole career being told you're too short, right? This and that, like with basketball, what would drive that individual to, in spite of and against all odds, keep spending three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours in the gym every fucking day, not leaving on vacations, not leaving on the, the vacations for school and spring break and all that and staying in the gym all the time. What would drive somebody to do something like that? Well, you can't be thinking normally, right? Like you literally have to be by definition crazy. So me having done that already in basketball, moving over to now what I'm doing now and real estate and everything else, I already knew, okay. And I saw it back when I started, I said, I can tap this in, right? Like I know the raw material that I use there. I just have to translate it over to what I'm doing now. So that transition for me wasn't that hard. Um, it was just a matter of recognition and connecting the dots. So, but you know, you look at in the past, I already done that with something, right? And I think up until that point, a lot of people are just lost and they don't really find something or, or, or something that inspires them or, or really push themselves in whatever area to be able to tap into that deeper, more unknown part of themselves that allows them to transcend and do good and beat odds because we're literally built for that shit, right? It's like there's always uncharted territory for humanity at the individual level and at the societal level. But at the individual level, it's like you're a kid, right? You're, you can be creative and do whatever the fuck you want. Like if you want to test what I'm talking about right now, find a kid who at like between age, I don't know, three or four and like eight or nine has decided what they want to do, right? And they tell you astronaut or whatever. Now I want you with all the logic on the planet for 10 or 15 minutes, try to convince that kid that they're not going to do it and watch how quickly they tell you to go fuck yourself and how they're still going to do it. Right. That's what I'm talking about here. That's that essence. That's one of those things that you need to tap into. And if you can, then you can do whatever the hell you want, but you lose that somewhere in the translation. And that's the problem. Right. And a lot of this process is shedding away instead of adding new, which is another part of the formula that people have twisted. Nice. I think uh, yeah, I froze, you froze, but I'm going to keep talking because this is recording on Zoom and it will be up on my YouTube channel either by tomorrow or next week for sure. So nice, man. I appreciate all the uh, the insight for sure. Got a few, uh, a few uh, people here. If anyone has questions, if not, I'm going to end it off with shouting out um, the Modern Success Movement. We're actually doing our fifth, right? Fifth live event in houston texas the end of march and it just gets better and better it's crazy because i've been to many live events and and networking programs um groups and stuff like that and there's just 
there's nothing like this. There is absolutely not, nothing like this in person, in live, in the groups, the talks, the connection that we get with BTC, the intimate conversations that we get to obtain with him. It's crazy. You see him on camera. He's exactly the same in person. There's no fluff. There's no bullshit. You get what you see. And it's cutting clear on that. I, I've been to a lot of programs and there's a lot of, there's a lot of, <laughs> I, man, <laughs> you already know, man. There's only a few people that I'm learning from right now. Literally you and Arash, which is your teacher for years. So it only makes sense that I'm keeping it in that circle. I'm learning from literally no one else and there's no need to. I'm keeping it very tight because it's just, it's, uh, that's another thing. If you're following someone or if you want to learn from someone specifically, learn from them or their teachers and that's it. And that's all you need if they're actually doing what they're supposed to do in life. You don't need anybody. You don't need four mentors. You don't need 10 coaching programs and asking a million questions versus like so many people because you're going to drive yourself crazy. Um, I want to end it off with that. And big shout out to uh, Team BC Real Estate. You said we're in how many states right now? 12 states, man. And uh, man, I, I, I know definitely we're going to be taking over for sure. We're out here in Jersey, Delaware. Florida, obviously California, Oregon, um, Philadelphia, and the other states, I don't, oh, Vegas as well, and uh, Texas. Do we have Texas yet or no? Michigan, Georgia. Uh, I think we're in Maryland now too. We're in Massachusetts because we have Craig. Nice. Oh, yeah, Craig. Yeah, man, Boston. But um, yeah, and another thing I want to say about the team is what I love most about it is not only that we're a team, we have weekly meetings. Uh, we have bi-weekly meetings with you, and then we have in-person meetings twice a year. Last, uh, The first one was in Florida. That was freaking amazing. And now we're going to be meeting up in June again in Hawaii. We're, we're going to be going crazy every, every uh, you know, twice a year. So this is amazing. And then on top of that, we're just not recruiting anybody. They have to qualify and meet the standards of, of, of BC himself. People are coming in and out, and that's what I actually like because I don't want to be a part of a team where they have fucking 50, 100 agents, and then next thing you know, you see it in the track record that only like uh, top 10 people are making money. No, everybody is getting results right now. Everybody's getting appointments. Everybody's getting listings, buyers, everything. Like they're all producing, and if they're not, they get the boot. It's that simple. So that's what I love most about it is, is, is only the strong that who survive. And um, yeah, big shout out to you if you want to leave – how many saver? I had a question. How many closings have you had so far, Ronnie? So I've been a part-time agent, agent that transitioned into a full-time agent. I am now pushing a little bit over uh, 20 in the low twenties for sure. Right now. I mean, I, I only closed one in January, but I have like five on the contract right now and I should be getting two more. Uh, before the first quarter so this year is already going out with a bang and uh yeah we just we just keep blowing up so if anyone has any more questions for myself or bc um if not you want to you know close it off on your side and um yeah i'll also put the link while you the link to the event just in case anybody wants to join yeah, man. Uh, if you guys are interested in coming to Delaware, uh, Philly, or New Jersey, you know, Ronnie can give you the links. I can give you the links. You can DM me directly. We've had a lot of people already sign up. Um, if you guys are interested in, in learning more about modern success, you can message me. I'll send you the link or go to the link in my bio and click that. Um, other than that, yeah, man, just shout out and tip my hat to Ronnie. He's a shining example of, you know, if you do things right and you dedicate yourself and, and you follow what you're taught, I mean, the results that you get. I mean, how many agents right now during COVID can say they have five pending transactions? I don't know many, bro, outside of our team, you know, unless they were producing at a very, very high level before that, you know, we got shut down for a month or a month and a half in the beginning. You know, you look at January, we did well. I think as a team here in SoCal, we took eight listings in January and I think we put another seven under contract. So, you know, we're having a good start to the year. Um, but it's more than that, right? It's more than that. I mean, you went to Florida. A lot of people are around. When you're around us, we have a good time, but we perform at a high level, right? And it's really about the combination of all of that, you know, and, and that's really what it's about. Everybody here is for the team. You know, I, I'm not about, oh, it's all about me and my name. Like my picture ain't even on shit. The only thing they have to put on anything is Team BC and that's it because I don't even care, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all about the team and our growth and the tribe and the movement. It's not about any one individual. And I think that's really what separates us from everybody else. I will have personal conversations with everybody on the team and the traditional thought process behind what we would do or what it would be like, whether that's Team BC or Modern Success, 
I guarantee you it's not what you think it is. It's much more. That's it, man. Uh, 100%. Well, I couldn't post a link because I would have had to leave the page. But anyone interested, DM me, DM Brian. We, yo, we already have like almost 20 people uh, joined for Jersey. It's crazy. So it's definitely been a long time pending. And it's only been like, what, a day or two? So Not even that's 24 exciting. hours, bro. Yeah. Yeah, brother. So I can't wait for that. Everybody on here, I appreciate you. Um, hit me up if you have any real estate needs. Uh, Brian as well. This will it. This is recording on my Zoom, like I said. So this will be on my YouTube channel shortly. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. BC, you already know what it is, brother. Mm -hmm.